While the trailer for the new Sims 4 Cottage expansion pack has elicited excitement for many in the Sims community, others had some concerns about the discrepancy between what they saw in the trailer versus actual gameplay. Perhaps nowhere was that more apparent than the confusion about the swimming in the ponds and relationships with wild animals. So in case you don't have Twitter or just missed it, this video will explain how ponds really can be used, why the trailer wasn't perhaps maybe as misleading as people thought, and a little bit more about wild animals as well as even some clarification about the crumple bottoms. Before we go ahead and get started, my name is Simmer Aaron. I cover Sims 4 news, speculation, and info videos as well as Paralyze. My question for you today is, from what you've heard about cottage living packs so far, what's something you're really happy about or what's something you might want to change? So some of these answers were actually from a couple days ago, but based upon my comment section I've been getting, I feel like it's really important to start kind of clarifying things and we're going to start with those pawns. Now I actually have done a video about pawns, but I wanted to expand upon it because I've learned some more information. So in case you missed this, we are getting some new pawn capabilities along with special effects to add to your farms. A lot of people though were watching the trailer and they saw Sims swimming and they thought that they were swimming in those ponds. So understandably they were upset when Simgur Romeo shared that ponds were not indeed swimmable. But in this case it turns out that it was a misinterpretation of the trailer. So is this a pull then or false advertisement? And of course you can see that screenshot from the trailer. Again this is what people were saying when they said but Sims were swimming in ponds. Why are you saying we can't swim in them? What you see here is the Bagley River from the New World. The New World will have various locations Sims can swim off lot. So personally to me that's actually good news because I like having swimmable regions within the world and for me maybe that even exceeds the use of being able to swim in ponds. So I'm actually happy about that. It makes me think maybe there will be some interesting locations within this world. But I honestly thought it was a river when I first watched, which of course is one of the few times I didn't get something confused or wrong. But I think what happened is that Simmer is kind of tied together the information about getting new pond capabilities and remembered that Sims were swimming in the trailer. Plus, it's not that hard to see how that misunderstanding could occur. On a more positive note, those with seasons installed will be able to see those ponds react a little bit with the weather, which again shows to me that maybe they are considering some pack integration. I really hope we get some great pack integration because I feel like this pack could have some excellent pack integration, not only with seasons, but also with nifty knitting, maybe even eco lifestyle and cats and dogs. Will ponds get frozen in winter if you have seasons installed? Just asking. And SimGuru Romeo did confirm ponds will freeze in the winter. So there's good news. There is though a downside to that as well because activities will be limited even with frozen ponds. Does that mean we can skate on them if we have seasons? For the same reason Sims are unable to swim, Sims are unable to skate on ponds. Now personally, I'd love to see this updated in the future if possible, especially considering that these new pond possibilities coming are actually also coming to the base game as the base game update, which will be really interesting to figure out what we think is going to come with that base game update. So again, I feel like it would be great if we got more capabilities with ponds. Frankly, it's not something that's a priority for me or something that greatly upsets me personally, but I do understand and respect anyone who might be disappointed. Now, ponds, of course, weren't the only things people were confused about. I already covered a number of things about how animals would work, so you can definitely check out my playlist, and I'm sure other simmers have covered it in depth, including llamas and cows are going to be coming with a shed, and there's only one per shed, and chickens, of course, are linked to a chicken coop. There also is no true pet that comes with this pack, but some things I never covered were how customization would work. Now, in the trailer, we do see animals in a lot of different colors, even very colorful colors that almost resembles the creative patterns you can make with cats and dogs and cats. We also saw a bunny wearing clothes, which led to some, I admit myself included, to first believe that meant that rabbits might be able to be pets and be edible in cats, but we know this is not the case. Thanks for the transparency. 
will we be able to customize the new animals and create a sim? I noticed that rabbits, chickens, and llamas have different colors and costumes. I would be satisfied if we could at least adjust colors and outfits in CAS. These animals are not available in CAS. However, you will be able to purchase various colors of cows, chicken, and llamas, which that was what I thought originally, maybe that it could be a possibility that there could be swatches. But for rabbits, you will need to explore the world and befriend the rabbit in your desired color. You will also be able to apply animal clothing in game, which is really odd to me. You can apply animal clothing in game. So I'm really interested to learn more about how that works. I'm assuming that is for an animal that you befriend. Not sure how I feel about that. You guys can let me know in the comments below. In an addition, someone let me know this. You will be able to actually figure out different ways to get different milk flavors from your cows depending on what you feed them. But speaking of feeding, many were concerned or maybe remain concerned about how or even if the plants you grow on the farm are any different from the gardening system we already have. I have a question on the oversized crop patch. Will it only be for the new crops or will it be applicable to all the crops, which includes the cow plant and the tree fruits? The oversized crops are brand new crops and function slightly differently than your normal gardening plants. Now, obviously, this doesn't give us a lot of details yet. I'm interested in learning more. The good news is that it's new and has new functionality. The bad news is the answer is no, it doesn't seem to apply to crops we already have, which I feel like, I again, I don't know much about this, but could have potentially been interesting? Not sure. But let's finish off on a relatively light note, which is about the crumble bottoms, which you all know, I am really happy crumple bottoms of any kind are coming. I actually, about 10 months ago, predicted that crumple bottom was coming back to The Sims 4. I forget why, there were some hints, and I thought I was even a little crazy at the time, but turns out I was actually right. So when we got those postcards, or rather the game changers got those postcards, and we got a digital look at them, they were announcing the pack, and it was signed AA Crumple Bottom, and a lot of people were wondering what that meant. So what does this mean and what will it mean for what crumple bottoms appear in the Cottage Living Expansion Pack? The postcards were sent out from AA Crumple Bottom. We're written by Agatha Crumple Bottom, not Agnes. Agatha is actually Agnes's cousin who lives in Henford on Bagley. You can see Agatha attending her garden stall in the background below. So it sounds to me that actually I was mostly right, but not completely right because it is Crumple Bottom that is coming back to The Sims 4, but I was wrong on which Crumple Bottom is coming back. You know, you can't win them all. So there you have it. I hope that helps anyone who was still confused about pawns or any of these other issues. And if you knew about this information anyway, and for some reason you're still listening to me rambling on, I guess thank you. For me, I feel like Sims trailers are arguably always a little bit misleading. I guess you could say that about any gameplay trailers for other games as well. Especially, it is also true in past Sims games. I do think overall, just in my personal opinion, this trailer wasn't that bad in terms of being misleading. I'd argue that Get Famous, for comparison, one of the Get Famous trailers, was very creative in how they represented a gameplay. So you could say that that was way more misleading with the artistic choice and designs they went with. It's always good to, of course, take trailers with a grain of salt and get more information. Now, as a whole, I personally am not 100% on board with everything that they've decided for the Cottage Living Expansion Pack. I don't think that there is ever going to be an expansion pack that I agree with everything on, but I do think that I mostly understand some of the decisions made. I have always said that if they're going to make a farming related pack, number one, it's probably not going to be a full farming simulator. And number two, there's probably going to be some trade-offs. And I'm not saying that all those trade-offs are always acceptable. I'm just trying to be a realist here, both in terms of the Sims world and also in terms of Sims 4, to be quite frank with you. I also do love that SimGuru Romeo has been actually very candid and vigilant about responding to everyone he can, and actually really respectful, and I did see a couple comments, of course, that were not so respectful to him, and he just didn't really respond to him. He didn't, you know, lash out at anyone. He is pretty professional about it, so I really appreciate that. 
But on the note, I will let you go. As always, I love to hear your thoughts about these decisions the gurus made. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.